Hello guys, Dinosaur here. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, in yesterday's video, I wished you guys a happy Easter. And I said that today I would uh, discuss a little bit about what Easter is. Uh, and I'm sorry, I keep waiting till like late at night to do these things. That's just when God presents the ideas to me. And, uh... So yeah, uh, why Jesus died for our sins, and why, you know, there were animal sacrifices in the Old Testament. As Christian, as a Christian, this is probably a, a question that you've been asked a lot. And, uh, the short answer is, um, you know, we're criminals who broke the law in God's eyes, and... There's nothing we can do to earn salvation or to earn God's favor. But Jesus came in and paid the fine so God can legally dismiss our case and let us live forever. Okay. And uh, before Jesus made paid the ultimate sacrifice on the cross, the Ten Commandments were laws that we had to strictly abide by and we still by, abide by the Ten Commandments today but not because it's what makes us saved it helps us show the fruit of salvation it helps us show we are saved and uh, the law uh, the law points out our sin where sin and where sin abounds, grace abounds that much more. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, we can be forgiven. God can forgive us of our sins because there was be there was a perfect sacrifice. And this is not an excuse to live in sin. This is an excuse to be free from sin. And knowing that because of Jesus, God can forgive every sin you've ever committed. This should make you not want to sin more. In fact, you will not be perfect until... Until the day we go to heaven and are sanctified, I believe the word is. Yeah, sanctified. And until then, we will still fall short in sin. But we will have an extreme distaste for sin compared to before. Now, in the past, the re in the Old Testament, the reason animal sacrifices were a thing is because... The only way that a sin could be atoned for was the shedding of innocent blood. And humans were the ones, we humans are the ones that brought sin into the world. Therefore, there wasn't an innocent human. And, uh, you know, human sacrifice was uh, heavily discouraged by God. In fact, it is a sin. It was a sin to begin with. Because the taking of human life for a reason other than self-defense is murder. And, uh, so the animal would symbolically die in, in the sinner's place. The way, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. That's the reason, that's the reason we all die, is because of our sin. It eventually kills us. But if we receive Christ, we can live on through him in heaven. And if not, then, uh, we pay the price in hell. But continuing on, the the animals they could only atone for a certain number of sins, or I don't I don't remember exactly how that worked. I need to read more into the Bible. More into the Bible. I mean, it's been a while since I read uh, in that part of it. Uh, and because the animal, you know, wasn't a human, it just couldn't cover all of it. And uh, God, it's not like uh, the Ten Commandments and the animal sacrifices were an imperfect plan. It's not like God didn't know that humans were going to fail to follow it. No, God knew. Because, as the Apostle Paul said, the law can only point out your sin. See, the Israelites, when Moses went to receive the Ten Commandments, they wanted the Ten Commandments. They wanted to 
earn God's favor. They wanted to prove their righteousness. The problem with that is God's standard of righteousness, God's standard of perfection is so high that we just cannot follow it. In fact, the Bible says if we fail to keep one law, we fail at it all. And I don't think there's a single one of us who, ha who hasn't lied, a single one of us who hasn't cov stolen or at least coveted. And I think very few of us have gone without taking God's name in vain. I know I sure haven't, because I've taken God's name in vain before. I've coveted, I've stolen, I've lied. And I'm grateful that through Jesus, I can be forgiven for all of those things. And God's standard is so high, if, if you so much as look at a woman, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart. And that's a thing that... and vice versa for women looking at guys that's i know any anyone past uh, everyone past the age of 12 has likely committed that sin in fact i know you have but i have too i have no room to talk but jesus because because he was god and human he was the perfect sacrifice in fact he lived a perfect, sinless life. He never committed a sin. He was tempted by Satan, just as the rest of us, but he never wavered. And he stuck with God's plan till the end. And because Jesus was hum fully human and fully God, he covered it all. And he covered it for the entire human race, past, present, and future. And when he, And when he was laying in the tomb he was there for three days and the three days is symbolic because three in Hebrew the both both numbers and letters have meanings in fact the letters are also numbers the letter three in Hebrew is the letter for complete I mean the number the number three for Hebrew in Hebrew is the number for completion and there are other numbers that represent completion as well. The number 7 and the number 10. So that's three numbers. So again, number for completion. God is three persons in one. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's three. Three is symbolic. It's three is perfection. Jesus was in the tomb for three days and then he rose from the dead because of our justification. And the tomb was... In a garden which is also symbolic to the Garden of Eden, where it all began. Where it all began for humanity. And Jesus was ro risen from the dead because of our justification. He paid the price that we could never pay. And because of that, we can all be granted everlasting life as a free gift. All we have to do is repent and trust alone in Jesus. And I know I've given this... Uh, uh, speech, if you will, several times. And I'm going to keep doing it for as long as God lays it on my heart. But all you have to do to receive everlasting life is to repent. Metanoia. Change your mind. Change your mind about God. Or about your own righteousness if you've already decided that God exists. You gotta change your mind about your own righteousness because you have none. But if you choose to receive Christ, His righteousness becomes your righteousness. Your spirit and the spirit of the Lord become the become one, like the number eleven, like I've talked about before, like ultimate Mordecai, like ultimate Mordecai has talked about before. Uh, because your spirit and the spirit of the Lord are joined together as one, God no longer sees you in the flesh; He sees you in the spirit. Your spirit is incapable of sinning, but while you are still in the flesh, you will continue to sin. But as long as you remain in Christ, you can be forgiven of that. And it is a battle, my friends. But thanks to Jesus, we've already won. And to those who are repenting for the first time, you don't have to. You don't have to say a certain prayer, certain words, as long as it's something along the lines of, "God, I'm sorry. I know I've broken the law. I know I've sinned against you. Please forgive me and help me to live for you." And thank you for what Jesus did on the cross. Amen. And when you do that, God will forgive every sin you've ever committed. 
and you won't stop sinning. It's not an overnight process, at least not for many. But God will work with you. He loves you as you are, but he loves you too much to leave you the way you are. But thanks to Jesus and what he did, what we celebrated on Easter, his resurrection, he was risen because of our justification. And thanks to that, the battle is already won. Satan, sin, they have already lost. Anyway, guys, I hope that uh, this message has blessed you. And uh, I will get into more topics about the Bible in future videos. And uh, I'm going to, and I will start relying on the Bible uh, a lot more heavily because I know I haven't done a lot of Bible reading and videos lately, and for that, I apologize. But, I, I will get to doing that. But, anyways, guys, I hope that uh, you've enjoyed, and I hope that uh, God can speak through this, because ultimately, that is what this is about. Easter is, what we is when we celebrate what God did for us. Nothing that we can do for ourselves, but what God did for us. Anyways, guys, I thank you for watching this, and uh, I hope to see you guys again soon. God bless.